guide us with thy mighty hand. Keep us free from evil powers. Be our life through countless hours. To our leaders, great defenders, grant true wisdom from above. for so long for this day to come. Yes, this evening, Serena Gordon's Educational World in association with GitHub Media Network presents Positioning our children to become nation builders. That is right. To kick things off, we have Mrs. Joanne Richards-Gov reading for her own language from the Jamaica New Testament, after which she will pray. Wonderful, wonderful greetings to everyone. So, may I go read from the Jamaica New Testament, the good news about Jesus, as according to Luke chapter 2 from verse 41 to verse 52. And then I am going to read the good news about Jesus as come to Matthew chapter 19 from verse 13 to 15. So listen up good. If the Jamaican language is not your language, then follow along in a version of the Bible that is yours. All right. Luke chapter 2 from verse 41 to verse 52. Every year, Jesus' mother and father got Jerusalem for the Passover holiday. One holiday, if you remember, how God did take the Israel people them out of Egypt. When Jesus reached 12, then carry him go with them. When the holiday done, his mother and father left to go back to their yard. But they never knew say Jesus did still their Jerusalem. Them take it say him did in the group of family and friends where them did a travel with. So they travel for one whole day before they start look for him amongst the group. When they not find Jesus, then go back to Jerusalem to go look for him. Three days pass before they find Jesus in a God house, sit down with the teacher them and listen to them and I ask them questions. Everybody we hear Jesus talk couldn't believe the way how he answer question and it's sitting them where him understand. When Jesus' mother and father see him, them shock. His mother said to him, say, see a boy, make you do it so. Me and your father did a look for you how long. Jesus said, what make you know a look for me? 
who no never know say me woulda in a me father house. They nay understand way ma say to them. After that, Jesus go back home and Nazareth with them, and him do everything them tell him to do. And him mother keep all of them sitting there in her heart. Jesus grow up big, indeed bright, and have no sense. God did happy with way ma do, and the people them did happy too. Good news about Jesus has come to Matthew chapter 19, verse 13 to verse 15. Then people carry little picnic them, come at Jesus for him, put him hand on them, and pray for them. But Jesus' special follower them start tell off the people. Start tell off the people them we bring the picnic them come and start run them. But Jesus said. Low the little picnic them. Make them come to me. Not try to tap them. Cause God kingdom of a people were coming like them little picnic. And him put him on pan them. And then he go about in business. A God word this. Thank God. So Father, thank you. We give you thanks and praise. For all the little children in the world. And for the fact that each one of them is special to you. And you have a purpose for bringing each one Get up! into the world. Get up! Yeah. Some people, some people never make it because of other actions of who would have been their parents. But these who are here are here for your purpose. We give a thanks for this time. Bless it, we pray. Give honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. The sad truth is there are a lot of things going on in our country and in our world. So let us trust in God and never lose hope. Thank you for your prayer and reading. You're welcome. Get up, get up, get up, get up! Get up! Yes, it hurts, but Jesus is the mender of broken hearts. Yes, it's confusing, but Jesus makes the crooked places straight. Yes, a lot of time has gone by, but Jesus is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Stop your weeping. Stop your mourning. Get out of your feelings. Jesus is here and he's calling you to get up. You got to put your trust in his hand. And get up from that situation. Get up from that moment. Get up from that season because you are not done. Yes, it died. Yes, it's stinking. Yes, it's lifeless. But there is one who has conquered death, hell, and the grave. And though he has delayed his coming for a season, he is now here and he just calls your name to get up. Cast down the spirit of the zombie. I ran over to the dictionary to look up zombie and something quickened in my spirit when I read the definition. The definition is a person given the semblance of life but mute and willless. I'm talking to some people who have simply been functioning like a robot from day to day with a memorized routine giving off the semblance of life. But if you be honest, that last blow left you muted and willless. That last no, that last failure, that last mistake, that last rejection left you for dead. We cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the disobedience of Christ. Can I submit to you today prophetically that the greater the problem, the greater the miracle. I said the greater the problem, the greater the miracle. The miracle that Jesus performed for Lazarus was the greatest miracle he had ever performed. It was something the world had never seen. Can I submit to you today that God's delay could be his divine setup for you to do something for and through you that the world has never seen. Do I have any faith walkers? Let me take a 
sidebar right here and encourage you to get rid of the people around you who are glorying in your weeping. Stop trying to make excuses for them. Stop trying to see it a different way. It is what it is. Holy Spirit has shown you several times. If I can't trust you to carry me when I'm weak and weeping, then I don't need you. I don't need you. That in order to get the miracle, there are some things that you've got to do. The first thing you got to do today is get out of the dark. I went through a season where I, where I struggled with rejection and depression. One thing I learned about the enemy is that in order to keep you bound, he tries to keep you away from the light. He wants to keep you in the dark. What is light? The word of God. Positive people, positive influences, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. We have to remove that hard wall that we placed over our heart. We have to remove that hate. For some of us, the first thing we need to do is remove the stone. We got to remove that hate and we got to remove that fear. We got to get rid of all those stones that are preventing the light of God from entering our situation. Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Can I submit to you today that before you can live again, you got to choose to remove the stones. Wow, that was deep. Our first performer is Jessica Haynes performing an instrumental piece. Let us show her some love, people. That was beautiful. Up next, we have Dejane Palmer performing a Negro spiritual entitled, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. <laughs>
indeed, 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 we must have Jesus walking with us. Our next performer is going to be Andione Alexander performing They Don't Know Me. Let us make her feel welcome. There is a land far, far away Where there's no night, there's only day Look into the book of life and you will see That there's a land far, far away Them city dancing, them city profile People see my life on one one But them no know say what times they look dumb at And them no see say I'm my belly me a crawl pan Come on mama just call me with tears in her eyes She never know me have a stage show tonight Not even she see the face in my eyes But me just a go and put on this show Cause they don't know See me smile, but they don't know what I feel inside. Only you know, only you know. They see me smile, but they don't know what I feel inside. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords sits upon his throne. He rules us all Look into the book of life And you will see That he rules us all That he rules us all In a deep boiling sun We're putting it on the street Righteous music, we're putting it on the beat, but nothing no righteous but our lives. Then. If you not know our life, then you not know our life yet. And my papa just call me poverty, make him a screw. He never know, send me have an interview, but yo, me still have to put on the show because they don't know us, so they don't know. See me smile, but they don't know what I feel inside. Only you know, only you know. They see me smile, but they don't know what I feel inside. They see me smile, but they don't know what I feel inside. They see me smile, but they don't know what I feel inside. That was some great singing, Andy. Let us acknowledge our guest speaker, Mrs. Rose Marie Banton. Reverend Amar Morrison, a pastor of First Missionary Church and also counselor. Last, but by no means least, Dr. Levine Morgan. No, we will be having our guest speaker, Mrs. Rosemarie Banton. But before she comes, performing for us is K Kiyomi Dixon singing a rendition of Wonderful, Merciful Savior. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescued the souls of men.
Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just grateful for the privilege of sharing in this forum this afternoon. And I trust that as I share that, you know, you'll be inspired. Um, we're looking at positioning our children to become nation builders. And, you know, there are many, many, many children in this island. And I believe that all of them have potential, great potential. So as I share this evening on positioning our children to be combination builders, I know that there will be some nation builders who will be formed this evening. And to take a quote from Lady Bird Johnson, it says, children are likely to live up to what we believe of them. Children are likely to live up of what we believe of them. So let us believe in our children and they will live up to it. I will be sharing this evening from a biblical perspective because I believe that all things have their foundation in the Bible. It is the word of God that forms the foundation of our lives. And so, as I look at the topic, I will also look at the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. And in this passage, we have the story of a man named Elkanah, and he had two wives. Now, in their culture, back in the days of the Bible, having two wives was okay, but in our culture, it is different. So Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Now, the Bible said Hannah had no children, but Penina had children. And in this passage, it shows that Penina provoked Hannah because I believe she felt, you know, superior to her because she had children, Hannah had none. But Hannah humbled herself and she went to God in prayer. And she prayed that she would have a son. And God was gracious to Hannah. And God granted Hannah a son. And Hannah named her son Samuel. And I believe out of Hannah's experience, we as parents can gain some perspective that we can use in helping to position our children to become nation builders. And so the first thing that I would look at is how as parents, we can be persistent in our prayers. Then I will look at how we can keep our promise to God as it relates to our children. And then finally, I will look at positioning our children for greatness. So let us look at praying for our children. Prayer is a key ingredient in all we do. So whether it is about our children, or it is about ourselves, or it is about us seeking for a job, or anything we do, prayer is a key ingredient. And parents, are you troubled? about anything concerning your children, I want to suggest that if that is so, then you need to go to God in prayer about those situations concerning your children. God will hear the prayer. Prayers offered up to him in faith will definitely be answered. The prayer of parents is crucial. 
Let me say that again. The power of parents is crucial. If we are to position our children to become nation builders, we have to pray for our children. We have to put them to God in prayer. We have to ask God to take control of our little ones. He has given them to us as gifts. And so we have a responsibility to do what it takes for them to become great, to become what God wants them to be. Listen, there are so many things that are happening to our children. I know that we know that we have children, 11, 12 years old, who are being recruited for gangs. And by the time they are 16 years old, we hear that they are gang leaders. Parents, we have to bring these situations to God in prayer so that he will hear that's not what he has given us our children for. He has given them to us so that we can lead them, so that we can guide them in the right direction, so that they will become great. We have to get back to the place of prayer. We have to get back to the place where our four parents were when they knelt at their bedsides and they called their children, each of them by name. And we know back in the days, parents used to have 10, 12, 13, 14 children. And they would kneel by their bedside and they would call each of them to God, place each of them in God's presence, call their names individually. And so parents, I believe that we have to get back to that stage. And I shared recently in another place, and you know, I reminded the people that we have to get to the black me culture. Now, those of us who are from the country, we know how we used to use the coconut brush and we used to kneel on our knees. And over time, the knees would become black. And I believe that that is where we have to get back where we have black knees before God on behalf of our children. We have to kneel at our bedside. We have to call our children's name before God so that our knees will become black. And as I thought about it, I thought that, you know, probably I have to lead, lead a black knee prior movement. So there are those of us who at a certain time of the day or night, we will go down on our knees and we will petition God for the children of this nation so that they will be rescued from the clutches of the enemy and they will become nation builders. There are so many things that need to be brought before God in respect of our children. And Jeremiah 32 verse 27 reminds us that there is nothing too hard for God to do. So we believe that some of our children have become so reckless. We believe that, I mean, some of them have gone so far that they cannot be rescued. 
But here is a verse that reminds us that nothing is too hard for God to do. And I believe that how God is going to do it is when we get back on our knees as parents and guardians, grandparents, teachers, when we get back on our knees before God for our children. So the next thing I will look at is to see how we can keep our promise to God. Now, when God has given us children, babies, and they're born, and you know, when they become a few months old, then we bring them to the place of worship. We bring them to church and we, you know, bring them to be christened blessed or baptized some people say and you know when we do this we are giving our children to God we are making a vow that we are giving our children to God so that they will become what God wants them to be we make a vow that we will take them to the place of worship we make a vow that we would give them up for service in God's kingdom. But parents, I am wondering if our children are the way we, they are, or should I say some of our children are the way they are because we have broken the vow that we have made to God. I believe that if we say to God, God, I am bringing this child to you. And I am vowing that I am going to see to it that this child is brought up in the fear and in the admonition, in the ways of the Lord. Then parents, we are to keep that promise. It is not a ritual. And some persons may say, they bring their children so that spirits will not follow them. It is more than that. It is a vow that we are making to God that we will see to it that our children are brought up in the ways of the Lord. That our children be can become nation builders when we bring them up, when we keep our promise to God to let them walk in the ways of the Lord, to let them go to Sunday school, to let them study God's word, to let them, to teach them how to pray. You know, we have a, the, our father prayer. And a lot of us had to say that prayer before we went to our bed. That was a thing that our parents vowed that they would teach us. But I don't know if this is still happening where we endeavor to teach our children their prayers, the Our Father prayers, to see to it that the, our children say their prayers before they go to bed. Is that still happening? I don't know if it still happens in some places, but I'm calling us parents to get back to the place. If we want our children to become brave, to become nation builders, then we have to get back to the foundation, which is the word of God. We have to teach them. We have to show them. We have to be the examples that our children will follow. Too many of us as parents are not living any form of example for our children to follow. Parents, God has given us these children. God has given them to us. God is expecting that we will teach them we will guide them in the right ways. 
I know that it can be frustrating because I have a child who is 11 years old and I know how that feels. But we cannot give up parents. We cannot allow our children to become par the parents and we the children. You know, some time ago, I was out at my gate and I saw a child and her mother walking down the street. And you know, the child was saying to the mother, you are going like say, and me at the mother, are you at the picnic? You see me walking at the dirty water, you now do nothing. Parents, our children know exactly what we are to be doing as parents. They pretend sometimes that they don't know, but they know exactly what we are supposed to be doing as parents. And they know when we are failing them. So I'm saying to us as parents, let us keep our promise to God. Let us not exchange Sunday school for school on Sundays. Let us get back to the place where we send our children, or even better, we bring our children to Sunday school so that they can learn from God. They can learn the truths of God and let that be their foundation. And then they will become great nation builders. I get to my final point, which is positioning our children for greatness. Our children will be great nation builders when they are positioned in the right place, when mentally they're in the right place, physically they're in the right space. Let us put our children in the right place. Some of us are mentally abusing our children. When we tell them how worthless they are, when we tell them who they are worthless like, we are mentally abusing them. Some of us are physically abusing them. Let us position our children where they can become great. I tell another story. I was driving one day and I saw a mother and her child. Now it is obvious that this child had just started to walk. So the child wasn't very strong in the way he or she was walking. Can't remember if it was male or female. But here was this mother telling the child the longest bad words I've ever heard for the child to walk up. Now you cannot expect a two year old or probably one and a half year old to keep pace with you. And from early, as early as that, this is what the mother is putting into the child. And so no wonder when some of these children grow up, they become so aggressive because this is what they are hearing. Parents, let us find another way of bringing up our children. Let us tell them what is good about them. Let us tell them what is admirable about them, rather than constantly telling them what they cannot be. Let us tell them what they can be. Let us not tell them what they look like, which is not pleasant. <laughs> Let us not tell them which part of them is so big, their heads are so big, their nose so big, their ears so big, their mouth so big. 
But let us find positive things to tell our children. If we want great nation builders, then these children that we have, we have to instill good things in them. We have to position them so that they can become nation builders, so that they be, can become better nation builders than the ones we are seeing now. Because we as parents have put into them what is positive. Let us parents be the examples. There are so many things that are happening to the children around us, as I said before. Nothing new, nothing strange, but you know, some things have intensified. We have to take our children out of those spaces and put them into places where they can be groomed. Sometimes we leave our children with persons who are not good examples. Sometimes we leave them and we're gone for days. We leave them in a bad place. I am asking us parents to move our children from a bad position. Place them in a better space. Sometimes we have to take them with us rather than leaving them with a neighbor who we know is not so responsible. It is better to take them with us where we are going, if at all possible. Parents, we have to position our children for greatness. We have to provide them with the tools that are needed for school. We cannot expect our children to become great when we have never bought a textbook for them to go to school. What will they use to learn? We cannot expect our children to become great when the only thing we are interested in is the brand of the bag or the brand of the shoe. When we don't even know, we haven't even looked at the book list to know the names of the books that we are to buy. It is better that we look at the brand of the book than the brand of the shoe. Because when we look at the brand of the book, then we know that we are positioning them to become great because we're providing them with the tools that they will need. And one thing, another thing, let's not just look at our children, the ones we have given birth to. Let us remember some other children. Let us remember the neighbor's children who may not be as fortunate as ours. Let us try to help where we can. Let us get back to the days when it takes a village to raise a child and not just any village, a village that is filled with good standards and how we are going to get that village that is filled with good standards. It is going to start with us as parents, as caregivers, as guardians. So let us position our children to become great. The foundation, as I said before, is in the word of God. In the story that we, that is found in 1 Samuel chapter one, Hannah, when she asked God for her child and God gave her this child, you know what she did? She brought the child to the temple and she left the child there in the presence of the priest. So as I conclude, 
I remind us that we have to be persistent in prayer. We have to keep our promise to God and we have to position our children for greatness. May God help us in our pursuit to position our children to become great nation builders. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Banton, for that wonderful and powerful word. I hope the parents are listening so we can help the children. And thank you, Kiyomi. Excellent singing here. In this section of the forum, it is the moment to have all been waiting for your thoughts can be heard let me introduce to you our moderator the john rose a 12 year old who resides in the united states of america over to you Dijon. thank you thank you i am really glad to be on the show um so we may be having some um technical difficulties with Dijon, but let me introduce our guest panelist, Reverend Omar Morrison and Levine, Dr. Levine Morgan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Great to be with you. Good evening. Good evening. So, I have some questions that I would like to ask. My first question is, what is nation building and why is it important? Okay, when, when I think of nation building, I think generally speaking of all the values and attitudes and positive contribution from, from people that can help to uh, move the growth and development of a nation forward. And uh, the, when we think of nation building, we have to think of it in the broadest sense as well. So sometimes we're unaware that there are various sectors of society and that we really need all kinds of people with various interests to help to build that nation. For example, um, we really do have seven pillars of society. So we have government, we have uh, business, we have arts and entertainment, we do have religion, we have media, we have education, and of course, I think I did say business. And we really need persons in all these spheres of society to help with the growth and development of society. So in a nutshell, when we talk about nation building, we're talking about people who positively contribute to the growth and development of our society in these various areas. And they're not all popular people. Some of them are unsung heroes but because of their positive contribution, they help to move the nation forward. So in a nutshell, that's my view as to who it is referred to as nation builders. Okay, Dijon is back. So over to you, Dijon, and we are at the second question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I uh, had some technical issues, but I am back. As I was saying now, um, I had um, some questions. Is nation building um, difficult? No, I'm um, not seeing her, her or seeing her. Would you like me to answer? Okay, can you please answer the question? All right. Uh, thank you for that question, whether nation building is difficult. Well, think of nation building and use the analogy of building a house. Um, I, I'm sure as young, as children, if you are very observant, you'll realize that there are many, many steps to building a house. It involves, uh, if you don't have the land yet, purchasing land, it involves clearing the land, it involves getting a design, it involves getting a contractor that is a person responsible, pulling everything together, and of course, when you're, actually, when you're doing the actual building, sometimes you might even have setbacks. Some persons might even experience hurt um, in the building process. That is, if they're not uh, taking the necessary precaution. If you use that analogy and you think of nation building, 
it can actually be very, very difficult because there are many different moving parts to balance, to mix the metaphor. So if you have persons in the field of entertainment or in the field of media or religion, and there's not a sense of unity, you are going to have some challenges. And of course, if you think of our own history, there was a time when many of our national heroes you know, actually fought for our freedom and they had to endure tremendous difficulties so that we can enjoy some freedom today. So in a nutshell, nation building is actually quite difficult, but it is possible to build a great nation with unity and hard work. Okay, thank you. Um, I also wanted to say, isn't it also um, dangerous because of all um, the uh, tools that you need? You know, uh, for example, you're building a house and um, it is very difficult because um, the roof and you can't measure it and all that, couldn't it just fall down and, you know, hurt somebody or something like that? Isn't it dangerous? It can be dangerous. And you think about the fact that there are some persons in the society who might not be in agreement with some of the values and some of the decisions that persons make. And persons can actually not just endanger you, but actually kill you for what you believe. And so it is downright dangerous. Um, there are those, for example, who would like to profit from illegal activities. And if you're a person of integrity and you're standing up for integrity, and for the values that will move the, the, uh, the nation forward. If you get in their way, you could actually get killed. But it's a risk that is worthwhile taking for the growth and development of our nation because many have taken those kinds of risks to allow our country to be where it is today. Oh, okay, I, I get it now. Um, I also wanted to ask, is nation building um, important? Uh, uh, like for if we don't build uh, uh, houses or anything like that, uh, will we die or something like that? Very good question. Um, what is certain is that based on God's uh, gift of grace to us, we will always get older. That's a natural progression. Children will, you know, get older. Um, they will become. Uh, if God blesses them, they'll become adults. And of course, you know, over time, uh, they will leave this earth through death. Now, it is not certain whether we can have a great society. That is something that is up to us. We will have to work at it to build a society. And it's actually very important. And it is the gift of each generation given to another. That is to say, we are responsible for building the generation and the nation now, and we pass that on to the incoming generation who will have a responsibility to pass it on to another generation. So nation building is actually very important. What we do now will help to secure a better future for our children and our grandchildren. So it's very important. We can determine what kind of nation to build. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you really much for answering all my questions. You're welcome, Bishop. Now, back to uh, our host. Um, I have a question. Is What are the things that can prevent nation building as it relates to parents and children? Okay, some things that can prevent uh, nation building. I think it's important for us to acknowledge that if we do not give children uh, great opportunities to excel and to you know succeed we're really robbing them children need opportunities children need um, the security of family who love them if we don't give them that we're robbing them uh, children need to be inspired they need the gift of imagination we need to help them to understand that what the mind can conceive, it can achieve. And if we don't do that, we're really robbing our children. It's important for us to remember that children are not just the future, they are the present. And therefore we make decisions with them in mind 
and we do our best to care and protect them, which is why we have a charter of rights and children have rights that must be protected. And we must uh, make sure that we uh, protect the rights of our children to help them. Okay, thank you. Does any of our viewers have any questions? You can write it in the chat. Okay, for Margaret. Agency, vision and unity of purpose are also valuable in nation building. Thank you. Absolutely. Uncle, what about the struggle in children? Like, for example, moral support from parents and guardians. Uh, absolutely. Um, children do need uh, moral support. Um, one of the very important things that we always need to bear in mind uh, that is foundational for nation building, and Mrs. Banton spoke about that earlier, uh, the importance of paying attention to values and attitude and integrity and building character. Um, we need to remember that when we speak of nation builders, we're usually referring to leaders and leaders who have heavy responsibility in various sectors of society. But if we don't empower children to take on leadership roles and not to be afraid of it, right, um, then you actually won't have sufficient nation builders to move the nation forward. And so that's part of the challenge that I think parents need to rise to. As we build uh, integrity and build character, we will have various uh, you know, adults in the various areas and sectors of society who can actually stand up to scrutiny and actually bear the responsibility of what it takes to move the nation forward in terms of growing uh, and developing our nation, a strong nation on the basis of integrity and character. As a counselor, Uncle, what are some tips you can give to students that are not getting moral support? I think the important thing to remember is that there, there's hardly anything as powerful as a good example. Uh, and again, you know, Mrs. Banton spoke to that earlier. But let's say, for example, you, you, there's a child in a home that doesn't have a father, and that's a feature of many homes uh, in Jamaica. You can look in the society for a good, good role model. You can look in your own church or in your community for a good role model. And you can emulate or take something from the life of that person. Um, never forget also that books are a wonderful uh, avenue for uh, moral guidance. And for example, you have many persons who are no longer alive but they have made significant contribution to the lives of persons. And therefore, you know, we, need, we can get guidance and moral support from people who have led a great lives that uh, can help us to lead uh, good examples that will ultimately help us to build a better and stronger nation. Okay, thank you, Uncle. We have come to the end of this evening's program. That was some wonderful questions and answers. In closing, let us show some appreciation to those persons who made this evening's forum an interesting one. If it was not for them, it would not be possible. We would like to thank our production team, Serena Gordon's Educational World and GitHub Network with Uncle Lance working alongside him, Miss Nora Gay Banton. We would also like to thank Dr. Levine Morgan, counseling psychologist, and Reverend Omar Morrison, pastor and counselor of the First Missionary Church for imparting their knowledge to us on how we can deal with real life challenges we encounter daily. A special thank you to our guest speaker, Mrs. Rosemary Banton, who reminded us how important it is to pray for our children and also how important it is to position our children to become nation builder builders we would also like to thank the viewers who took the time to participate in this evening's program 
We could not have done this without our talented performers. We love you and we really appreciate you as we work together to help in building a con concrete foundation for our children. Let us trust God and never lose hope. Thank you everyone for watching this program or this forum. We really appreciate you spending your time with us. It is really appreciated. So you just want to say I used to be so broken, lost, empty. A heart with no beat. A singer with no song to sing. So I know the feeling, the silence is deafening, but in your pain lies a blessing, a sweet and sour victory. So keep walking, 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 though it seems so far. To me, I know you're scared, your heart's bleeding. But what are you gonna do now? I think it's time you break free. And keep walking, 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 though it seems so far. No, it doesn't really matter who. for Dr. Levine. She had an outage. Goodbye, everyone. Kisses! Mwah.